Canis Vegiosa. Am I doing it right? Oh, hello, and welcome to my sharecropping mine. I think the only thing I can actually grow down here are mushrooms, and I don't know if they're edible, but you know what? Take a seat for a minute because I'm going to tell you about a farming game of sorts. Yes, recently a game called Homestead Arcana released, and it has a very interesting pedigree. It's coming from Skybound Games. It even has some impressive voice work. Yuri Lowenthal uh, is a talking cat in this, and uh, Erica Ishii plays the kid that is your character, although doesn't really have any dialogue, so to speak, just more or less, you know, expressive sounds that she makes throughout the game, but still wonderful to have her for this experience. <sighs> Homestead Arcana is a game that is going to be very similar to other farming games that you might have played, but the interesting little twist here is that you are a witch, and as a witch, you get, like, magic and stuff that you can utilize in order to, you know, grow your crops or to build your homestead and even to make potions that you will need as you traverse a very dangerous phenomenon affecting this world called the Miasma. So there's basically two kinds of gameplay that you see here. There is the stuff that you do on your homestead where you are uh, planting crops and growing them and utilizing them for recipes so that you can fulfill requests from people and you know, make more complex recipes of the course of time. And then there is the exploration part that happens in something called, as I said, the miasma. And in this place, you cannot stay there for long. When you first enter the miasma, you start to realize that this place is toxic. You would have to hold your breath for an inordinate amount of time in order to stay there for more than just a handful of seconds. Luckily, one of the first upgrades that you get is essentially a Plague Doctor mask, which can then be upgraded throughout the game to allow you a timer so that you can stay inside of that miasma longer. This may start to remind people a little bit of any kind of diving game that you may have experienced where you now have a clock on you as you are underwater. You have to hold your breath. But you're not underwater in this. You are just inside of this infected area that you are not able to actually breathe through. I will say that this is an interesting mechanic because it does put a little bit of pressure on you to know what you're doing when you get into that miasma. You need to have a grasp of the timer that is ticking down as long as you are inside of it. And to be aware that you need to have an exit plan if the timer starts to run out. Sometimes backtracking through the traversing landscape that is beyond that miasma is very tricky to easily traverse back, and there aren't always shortcuts in order to do so. There are also some enemies that you will encounter, but interestingly enough, in this game... You don't really have the ability to fight back. You don't have weaponry in this game to fight back. So how do you deal with that? Well, that's where your potions come in and your magical ability. You can use potions, down them, and for a limited amount of time, you have access to special abilities that will let you see things that you normally can't see or turn into shadow for a limited amount of time, or slow the world down. And this allows you to get around obstacles, which is really what the enemies are. They're an obstacle to overcome more than anything else. Eventually, after you've spent enough time inside of that miasma, you may, luckily, be able to restore an entire area of the map and cleanse it of that infection, at which point 
you are now free to roam around it at your leisure. And it unlocks a whole lot of other wild plants and uh, herbs that you are able to use for teas and extracts, etc. back at your farm. The walking around part does get a little bit cumbersome with the backtracking that you have to do continuously, but what I did find interesting is that after you cleanse the first area, you are granted this broom that you are able to ride around on when not in that miasma. So now you actually have a lot more freedom and a lot more speed and even some uh, racing that you can do from point A to point B as challenges. And this really opens up the world. The problem is that you may not know that when you start into the game, and so it takes a while for you to get to that point, and so you kind of have to stick with it. There is a slow burn quality to this that needs to be addressed. Uh, there are going to be seemingly grindy sections where you have to just accrue a lot of resources so that you can boil them down into recipes so that you can send them off to the necessary people so that you can get uh, new recipes so that you're able to increase your, your mask usage or get more life or more magical ability so it's easier for you to get through that section so that you can cleanse it. But once you cleanse that first area, you start to realize that the world opens up so much more. It's just, it feels a little bit sloggy before you get to that. And then there is this other problem. Remember that first aspect I was talking to you about the farming? Well, how do you usually do farming in most, like, cozy games? The Stardew Valleys, or the Coral Islands, or the No Place Like Homes that I've talked about on this show. How do you typically do that? You, you walk up to the plant, and you say, Harvest! And you harvest the plant. Maybe you plant some new ones, and you water them, and they come up. Yeah, Homestead Arcana, it's not like that. You find, in the miasma, certain plants that you can then plant in a designated area of your homestead. You then care for that individual plant use your magical energy to focus on building it up, water it, fertilize it, whatever you need to do, and then you pick the individual fruits off of the plant. And in what I think is a, a really interesting but also kind of annoying thing, I can't just walk up to the corn stalk, for instance, and just get the corn off of it. I have to go into a screen where I am now analyzing and able to go around that corn stalk in like 360 degrees. And then I have to like choose from the stalks themselves over to the actual corn, and I have to pick the individual ears of corn. And when you do it the once, it's kind of neat because you can also get the, this, these trimmers so that you can trim the plant back and you can use water, fertilizer, and all these different things to maintain the individual plant. But when you start to need to get a lot more of uh, these, these products, and you especially get enough where you've completely utilized the space in your garden, going up to those individual plants going into a specific screen, and then having to maneuver myself across all of the branches and leaves to get to the individual fruits or vegetables that I need to get is just a waste of time. It's just annoying that I can't just click on the plant and get all of the stuff that's on the plant. We figured this out a long time ago. It's, it's unnecessary busy work for me to get into the minutia of, like, picking through the plants. There's, there should have just, there, there could have been a quick harvest button or something to make this process easier and faster. Because then I have to go to my individual grills and, and workbenches and mills, and I have to utilize all of that in order to make recipes. 
and and in teas and stuff so that I can keep my health up and get money and everything like that. There's just weird choices that they make in Homestead Arcana. Like, for instance, money. Usually you figure money is just like a thing that you accrue, but in this it's an actual resource that sits in your inventory. Yeah, and, and not only that, but it will only stack to 100 silver. So if you get 1,000 silver from something that you have sold, which is not very common, but it does happen, you then basically wind up with 10 squares of your inventory with 100 silver each in them. So eventually you have to like create a whole storage bin just to store your money because it's a physical resource and not just something that you have in a coin purse, something, something like that. Uh, very odd. Like, just some, some odd choices. Also, a kind of weird choice is that you get this, this neat mechanic where you get these ravens that come down and deliver messages to you from your parents or from your old school teacher and the mayor, all of these people. And then you have a hutch where you can fulfill requests for them. But what I found was really odd is that the requests come in far faster than you can actually fulfill them. And before you know it, you have this stacked log of quests that you have to go through and analyze. And keeping track of what you need to give them can be a chore into and of itself. There is also a rotating thing where the uh, the mayor needs certain products. They're, they're running low on cotton or corn or lavender or something like that. And they want you to deliver that product to them. But the way that they make you do that is by taking each individual piece and placing that one piece of produce into each individual hutch space and you manually do it for each one i have to click on the hutch i have to go to the space on the hutch i have to say yes i would like to send something off i then go to my giant list of quests i get to the bottom it says lavender yes send a lavender confirm that you want to send the lavender there it is great now i move over one space in the hutch and I repeat this process so that I can send one more lavender off for this collection quest. And again, and again, and again, if you want to fulfill those requests. Why? Why can't I just say, I want to send ten lavender strands to the bay and just send them? What? Why is that a problem? Why is it when I go to sell items to the handy little shopkeep that comes down every morning, he has a limited amount of inventory space for the stuff I can sell? Like, I can't just sell him anything that I want to sell? No, no. If, if he doesn't have enough space in his bag, well, you can't, you can't sell him anymore. And some of the items that you get as the game goes on are incredibly large. They sometimes take up, like, three by four squares. There's a charm that I was using that just makes your shadow spell last longer, and you have to keep it in your inventory. But it takes up what amounts to 12 squares worth of space in your inventory, and it has to stay there, like, prominently featured. It's just not particularly user-friendly from an expedience sort of standpoint. There are faster ways that you can do this. I know because I've played games where they do. And I, I'm not sure if it's just that Homestead Arcana wanted to really get you into those like weeds where you're appreciating the individual plants and the individual process, but it just comes off as unnecessary busy work and minutia where there didn't need to be minutia. In terms of the aesthetics, though, the game is great. Like, from a sound design standpoint, from a look, from from the, the way the world is built, 
the atmosphere that it creates, the lovely cell-shaded design, all of that works really well. It all looks really good. It has a nice style to it. And once you get over the hurdle of that first area and realize what the game is trying to do, really unlocking these individual places and expanding the world outward and giving you fast travel points and everything like that. Once you get there, you start to realize that, that there really is a lot more to the game than you previously thought. But it does take a while to get there. And more than that, it insists on bogging you down from the start where I think it's going to turn a lot of players off before they really understand how much more there is to it. And that's unfortunate because I think there is something to the game that is very charming and has some legs to it. But it doesn't really re want to reveal that to people from the outset. You might just be taken in from the fact that your companion is, is a talking cat. And that's cool. Uh, you may be taken in by the idea of this world that is filled with this infection that you need to cleanse once you start to realize that that's what you're actually doing. You might be taken with the idea of incorporating some kind of magical element into the framing of a farming game, and that might tide you over until the game can reveal more, but it does take quite a long time to get there, and unfortunately uh, that kept me away from the game for a while after I initially played it, and it took me a while to get back to it to realize that, yes, there is something more to the game that is worth exploring. I'm always looking for, like, the Cozy Farm games, and this was right up my alley, and even though it is definitely my kind of jam... It's not necessarily the best I've seen. I, I do think that it might be better than, like, No Place Like Home, which I played and talked about on the show recently, mostly because that game focuses mainly on tearing down mountains upon mountains of trash. But at the same time, it is nowhere near the best examples of the genre that I could give. Speaking of the best examples of the genre that I could give... This is the part where I suggest another game that you might want to play, and nope, we're not going to do Stardew Valley. Nope, we're not going to do Coral Island. Talked about that on the last one. Uh, I'm going to give you a different one. Uh, actually, one that I really did like a whole lot that is in this genre that I don't get to talk too much about, which is My Time at Portia. My Time at Portia is one of these games that focuses less on the actual farming aspect and more on the building aspect where you get your father's old workshop in this town of Portia and you get to use it to rebuild the town, uh, build up the infrastructure, the taxi cabs that they use, the elevators that allow you to get to new places, bridges to previously unaccessible areas that the town had never been able to get to. And it is charming in that regard. I have not gotten a chance to play my time at Sandrock, which is the new one in that series, but I know that it's uh, kind of similar in its framing. But I really did enjoy playing it all the way to the end, and, and especially when you get into the later game and go through the seasons and everything, you start to find that there there is this neat idea about the relationship between the humans that live in this world and these mechanical constructs of, of an almost beaten down ancient civilization that came before and the relationship that that goes on between uh, that old ancient civilization that's in ruins now and this new world that has been built. Really great game, a lot of fun, does the genre proud. Okay, I'm going to go harvest some mushrooms now. One of them's staring at me. I've got one mushroom. And it's staring at me. With its beady little white eyes. And its red hat. It just tipped its hat to me. What is happening? Run! 
run, run for dear life. I think, I think the fumes from the mushroom spores are getting to me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs>